What's up guys? It's a beautiful rainy day getting dripped on by the truck, but we're going to be covering how to replace a uh, common failure part on a second gen Tacoma, which is the carrier bearing for the rear drive shaft. Um, there's your Dorman part number right there, and uh, let's get right into it. Since I'm going to be on a lift with both the rear wheels off the ground, it's going to be to my benefit to have this in neutral so I can freely spin the drive shaft to get to all the drive shaft bolts. All right, first step is we indexed our drive shafts. I just took a punch and made a mark here and made a mark here. I made a mark here and here. So when we go to put our drive shaft back on after we replace the carrier bearing, we can line it up exactly where it was. All right, so we're gonna remove the 14 millimeter nuts here that hold the drive shaft to the flange on the transfer case. Um, and of course we put our transmission in neutral so we can spin the drive shaft to get easy access to all the nuts. If you're not using an air gun like I am, uh, what you can do is take a pry bar or a screwdriver <clears throat> and wedge it in here to hold this still while you break it loose with a, with a wrench. As you can imagine, this flange is gonna be just a little stuck. The drive shaft's gonna be a little stuck to the flange, so what you can do is take a pry bar like this and just pry until it separates. And once that's loose, we can leave that just like that until we uh, take the rest of everything else loose. All right, for the rear of the drive shaft here, there's a 14 millimeter bolt with a 14 millimeter nut. Um, you may need to put two wrenches together to get enough leverage to build with it being in neutral the drive shaft's going to want to spin if you're having trouble breaking it loose you can always put the vehicle back in park so we're going to go ahead and break all four of these loose Now that we got our bolts and nuts removed from the rear flange on the drive shaft, I've just supported it with an exhaust jack. Um, if you're doing this on the ground, you could use a regular jack or honestly even just kind of let it hang. It's just, I'm gonna be doing this over my head, so I wanted something to kind of hold that. Um, after that, uh, there's two 14 millimeter uh, bolts that hold the carrier bearing to the frame of the truck. And I'm going to remove those and then bring the whole drive shaft assembly down as one piece. All right, we got our drive shaft on the workbench here. Uh, the yoke on the same side as the carrying bear carrier bearing, which we are replacing. You're gonna have some clips on both sides of the U-joint here, and you're gonna have to remove those. Just take a pair of pliers and pinch. We need something to help pry it up. Like that and there's going to be one of those on each side. Once I get my clips out, uh, what I like to do is just kind of, I took a pocket screwdriver and scraped any grease and mud off, and I'm just going to blow all the debris out of both sides. All right, now that we got our clips removed, uh, next thing we're going to do is remove the U-joint from this yoke because we have to gain access to this nut here. Um, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could rent like a kind of like a ball joint press. Uh, since most of you probably won't have that at home, I'm just going to be doing this with a hammer and uh, assortment of sockets and stuff like that. So what you want is a socket that is the circumference of the yoke, but big enough to allow this cap to rise up. So you're going to support this side of the drive shaft on a vise and have this this is allowed to go down because it's not going to hit anything. So next thing we're going to do is get this cap moving. 
as you can see, it's uh, already protruding up out and it's uh, going pretty smoothly, so. All right, you're gonna reach a point where it's gonna stop uh, and we can go ahead and stop from there and then we're gonna flip it over and work on the other side. I flipped it over now, then we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna reach a point where it's gonna, the, you'll be able to remove it from the U-joint. All right, before we remove our yoke, uh, once again, I indexed the yoke right here and indexed the drive shaft there. So once we put the new carrier bearing in, we can have the yoke oriented how, exactly how it was when we took it off. Nut for the yoke is 15 sixteenths and we will remove that next. After the nut is removed, um, you may have to take a hammer and very lightly tap on the yoke to get it to start moving. Um, there's also a washer that's going to be under that nut, so just set that aside. And then from here, the yoke just slides off just like that, and it is splined. And that is also another reason it is important that we indexed our yoke and our drive shaft so we can put it on how it was. So this outer piece will actually slide off the bearing itself. Uh, what we're going to do is I've lubed it up with a little bit of little bit of uh, silicone lube here from the back side and you can take a screwdriver and get under the bushing and spin it around and pry it off just like that. With this part of the carrier bearing removed, we have to remove the actual bearing off of here. Now it is pressed onto the shaft itself, so what you're gonna need is a punch or a pin or, or something of some sort and a hammer. And there's a nice lip they got right here on the edge for you and we're gonna have to hammer it out off that way. So this is the bearing that uh, you just saw me hammer off of the shaft here. Um, next, we're gonna really wanna clean up these surfaces right here. Uh, first off, because the new part, that surface right here, is gonna have to press, well, slide over this. So you want that nice and clean so it'll go on there easy. And then you're also, on the new carrier bearing, gonna have a seal riding right here. So you don't want any dirt or debris there because obviously that'll do damage to your seal. Right, one very important step that actually your door member replacement part comes with a piece of paper that tells you to do is we're going to have to put some uh, grease. I'm using some heavy duty synthetic grease and we want to fill this channel up right here. Not an excessive amount, but enough to keep that bearing lubricated over time and we're going to do that on both sides. So we've got this cavity all filled with grease on both sides, as you can see here, including the channel on this seal on the outside here. You want to make sure that's full of grease too, because that's going to be riding on that, on that metal surface that we talked about cleaning earlier. Um, next, you're going to want to make sure that this is clean as well. This will be a surface that the other seal is going to be riding on, so make sure there's no dirt and debris on that shiny surface right there either. What I'm doing here is putting a tiny dab of motor oil where this bearing is going to have to press over on the shaft and this is just going to help ensure that it slides over there nice and smooth. After we lubed our surface, we'll slide this on by hand as best as we can. Be sure to have your prongs uh, facing the rear of the vehicle. So this is the front of the drive shaft and the rear of the drive shaft is going to be here. That's very important because uh, these are going to have to go around the part of the frame where this bolts to. So, referring to our index marks we made on a drive shaft and our yoke here, uh, go ahead and slide that on there. Uh, I'm taking a 22 millimeter socket 
that fits over that and you just go ahead and take a hammer and tap the yoke and that'll tap the carrier bearing and slot it over to where it needs to be on its shaft. After doing that, it looks like it's all the way seated. Uh, everything feels good. So we're gonna take our washer from our nut. We're gonna slide that back over. We're gonna take our nut and start that. And then what I'm gonna do is run it up just until it stops. And we're gonna be torquing that to 134 foot-pounds. This may be a little difficult to see, but right here there's a spot where you can index the nut and that's gonna keep it from coming loose. So you're just bending down the lip of your nut here and it falls into the groove that's on the uh, threaded part and it's gonna keep your nut from backing off on you after it's torqued. So as you see inside of the end cap for the U-joint, there's a bunch of little needle rollers uh, make sure all of those are pressed up against the walls like they should be and you can even dab a little bit more grease in there and it'll help keep them put on reassembly here. So we're going to start uh, putting the two drive shafts back together. Um, I'm actually installing a brand new U-joint. You don't have to do this if yours is okay. Mine seemed alright but I already had a U-joint in the truck as a spare um, so I might as well just go ahead and do it. I'm putting a little bit of grease here on the inside to keep these needles where they should and what I'm gonna do is get this started just slightly now that I've got my cap started um, I'm gonna make sure I line my shafts up with them indexed correctly I don't have the bottom cap started quite yet you're gonna put the bottom in first rotate the top up and get it started in the cap here. Now, because I have a vise, I'm gonna choose this method. So basically you're gonna drop it into the vise just like that. And then once you get it in there, you're gonna to start to press that cap into the yoke. trying to get you guys a better view here but once you get this cap pressed in until it's flush what you can do is take a socket and of course if you're using a hammer you can do the same thing uh, the, as the vise is doing I just prefer the vise because I'm not having to do a bunch of beating on the u-joint get that lined up and what we're gonna do after I got the cap into that far I'm using a socket that is smaller than this, but the same size as the cap. And what I'm going to do is take the vise and actually over press the cap further than it needs to be uh, in this way. And I'll show you why here in a second. So now that we have our other cap pressed in most of the way, we can take our final cap and actually lift this up so this protrudes a little bit. And then what that is gonna allow us to do is to get the new cap started on that shaft where it needs to be. So now we're at the point, we're back in the vise, we're pushing our other cap in. So now our U-joint is completely captured in there and it's not gonna go anywhere. Before we push any further on that other cap, on the cap that we pushed down further than it needed to be, we're going to go ahead and put our clip in. With our clip in on this side, we're going to take the socket back on that side in the vise and push it until you see that gap close there. And what we're doing is just seating this cap against the clip that you just placed in there. 
So you're gonna feel quite a stop, and if you're hammering, you'll feel a stop too. So you're gonna go ahead and stop there, and we'll remove the drive shaft out of the vise, and then we can put the clip on the other side. All right, with our cap seated to the clip on the other side, we are now free to install our clip on this side. Now with both of our clips installed, um, we, are, we can be sure now that we haven't dropped any needles in the cap on our assembly because if there was a needle dropped in there, uh, you wouldn't be able to get these clips on both sides. There's just not enough, enough clearance on them. All right, that's the new carrier bearing installed. Um, went ahead and greased all the U-joints and now we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the truck. carrier bearing installed into the truck. Um, first thing I did was torque the flanges back to the transfer case in the rear diff. These are 65 foot pounds on those nuts. Uh, and these nuts and bolts are also 65 foot pounds. And of course, be sure to have your, your indexes lined up as you can see there. Um, and then after I had those torqued, then I tightened up the carrier bearing bolts themselves, which is these two 14 millimeters and those torqued to 27 foot pounds. I've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. That's how you install a carrier bearing on a second gen Tacoma. As always, like and subscribe for more. I'm always gonna be doing videos like this as my truck needs more repairs. So stick around and you'll get to see more and hopefully you learned something and hopefully this helped you be able to replace this at home and save you some money.